Hey there, friends and fellow humans. This is Sarah coming at you from the land of Penang, Malaysia, which you cannot see right now because I only have a wall behind me, but that is where I am. I'm about to work with the company here, and it had me thinking about what it is that forms communication. There's a metaphor that um, a friend of mine came up with the other day. He said, I think I figured out what your spirit animal is. I think you're a beaver. And I realized that social beaver is a great way to describe what it is that good communicators are. Basically, you can think of communication as like a body of water, a river between two people. Um, or the river is the connection between two people. When the communication is good, when the connection is good, the water level of the river is high. Things are flowing easily. Everything that's bad kind of goes downstream, gets washed away. You just have this natural flow, this natural ease of connection and communication. And if sometimes there are ripples in the pond, it's not that big of a deal, right? Because you have a lot of trust built up. However, there are natural life stresses. Um, maybe one of you loses your job. I'm going to use the metaphor of partners for this, but it can mean any sort of relationship, work, friendship, parents, whatever. Um, so say you're in partnership, one of you loses your job, or you have kids, which I hear is one of the most stressful things. Um, or you have a fight with each other that you can't seem to get past, the water level of the river starts going down. It's almost like every conflict like sucks a little bit of the water out. Now you can replenish this water. You can go on dates, you can go for walks, you can take breaks, you can you know, make jokes, you can go back to the things that brought you joy in the first place. However, we don't always get to choose. Uh, sometimes maybe you're long distance from each other or there's a stress that you don't have control over, like money. And so the water level kind of goes down and down. And then when you get the water level low enough, you start seeing all the rocks on the bottom of the pond or the river, whatever, body of water, let's go with it. So you start seeing all the rocks and you start kind of skidding over them. And these rocks are all of the little things that bug you about each other, all the little conflicts that have been passed by over time. And most of the time we don't see them, right? Because they're under the water but now they're all coming to the surface. And we're tempted to pick these up as ammunition against each other. Like, oh, you did this, you did this, and fill our pockets with all of these rocks so that we can take them away and later use them against our partners. Or if we're communication junkies, we wanna pick up every rock and look at it carefully and be like, okay, what's this rock worth? This rock, what's this rock? Do you see this rock? You know, this was, this was part of our relationship before. This is it's a very interesting rock. You know, you made this part of this rock. Let's talk about how you made this. I know I made this part, but let's talk about how you made this one. And then I'll try to own this one, but I'm so triggered that I won't own it very well. So we'll just try to talk about this bit. If you're upset, it's really hard to talk about these rocks rationally, right? You're trying to be a geologist and look at all the pretty sparkles and actually what you're getting caught up on was, is it sedentary or whatever, igneous. Ha, I remembered that. That was science class in eighth grade. Um, and then you're arguing over, you know, which classification it is. And neither of you really remembers anything from geology because history is rewritten in our minds all the time. So it's going to be kind of a losing battle. So you're down to these rocks and it is actually sometimes a good thing. Like these are the things that get covered up and being able to look at them, being able to see what's on the bottom of this stream, that maybe these rocks actually are things you've been stubbing your toe on for a long time and the stress in the relationship causes them to be revealed and you can talk about them. You can be like, oh, you know, right now I'm super stressed about money and that means that things are bugging me more, but like, actually, I really am angry at the way that you talk to your mom. And most of the time I just kind of let it go, but now I'm annoyed enough to actually see it. So that is a good thing for us to talk about, but maybe not now. Maybe what we need to do first is be a social beaver and build a dam to raise the water level back up. Sometimes the stress will go away and the water level will naturally refill itself by doing the things that bring you joy together, by nourishing your relationship. Sometimes though, you don't have choice over the stresses and so you artificially have to build something to refill the water level, at least in certain parts of the river, so that you can get through. This can be simple things, go out on a date night together, you know, have a good conversation, or choose to play something like an authentic relating game. The reason I love these, and the reason my friend uh, Khan called me a beaver, 
is because that's essentially what I do. I build social dams. An example of that could be, you know, you might be at dinner with your partner or friend or whoever this is, and you might say, okay, we're getting stuck on these rocks. So for the next five minutes, for everything we say, we're then going to say why we said it. So for instance, you know, if I say I'm, uh, I'm using the metaphor of being a social beaver because I give a because to it, like why, why am I even bothering to say that right now? Right now, because I want to give a good example to this and because I don't want to look like I'm totally struggling and didn't prepare enough for my own video um, and also to hide the fact that I'm kind of anxious. So that's like all the stuff that's like, if I, if I even pick these rocks up, that would be what's underneath. It's like the silt that's collected. Um, so getting getting those things out into the open um, could be why you said the thing, why you believe the thing, um, why it occurs to you in this moment, where it comes from, whatever. Just let the other person in a little bit to your world. So that's one possibility. Um, another could be one that I used actually with a friend today. I noticed that I I felt scared to share something vulnerable because I had had an experience recently trying to tell him something and I hadn't been heard. And I wanted to tell him that I hadn't been heard and that I was upset. And I wanted to pick up this rock and be like, hey, see this rock? Like, I th this matters to me. Like, you know, I want this rock to be seen. I want you to look at it too and us to hold it together. You know, I don't want to just chuck it at you and I don't want you to drop it and be like, well, I don't care about that rock. It's important to me. And I realized that I might not get that unless I specifically said before sharing the vulnerable thing, hey, I'm about to show you a rock. Here's what I'd like you to do. Actually, I think what I did was I, I shared the vulnerable thing and, and then I didn't get the response I wanted. And then I asked, and what I'd really love you to say right now is just like, oh, honey, I'm sorry that hurt. I'd love to hear more about it. And he wrote back, oh, honey, I'm sorry that hurt. I'd love to hear more about it. Then he went offline for the next three hours, but we did manage to talk later on and I continued trying to make requests for, you know, I want to share this thing with you. And afterwards, I'd love it if you shared impact, if you just told me exactly what came up when I said it. And he kind of paused and hesitated and was like, oh, he might not be able to do that. Because often for people, when they hear something, they don't know what they feel afterwards, especially men I find this in. And so being told to share emotional impact is really scary because it's like a minefield. Your partner is waiting for you to have a feeling about something and you're like, I didn't feel anything. I just thought things and most of them were about football. I'm being, you know, very sexist there. But um so what I asked is I said either I'd love you to share impact or um reflect back what I said. And uh it was great. So that's another way to build a dam. Um, so the last thing I'll say on this is if you do decide to go rock collecting before building your dam or even at a later time, uh, try not to fill your pockets with all the rocks at once. Like don't try to solve every issue that you have. If you're triggered, it's going to be twice as hard and you can't fix everything at once. And you've seen these situations differently. So like a lot of the time trying to resolve something, you're gonna revisit the same things over and over again. You're always gonna be looking at the same rocks. The goal is to look at them together rather than just chucking them at each other. So remember that if you're you know, being a geologist, make sure that you're both actually treating it like science rather than an academic battle. Okay, I hope you get a chance to be a social beaver this week with somebody that you love. <laughs>